All right, so finally, uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, today we are going to talk about a little bit about uh, running uh, database on Kubernetes. So my name is Dennis. I work for a company called Couchbase. Couchbase is basically one of the most popular NoSQL database right now. And I would like to start with a small tip for you guys. So whenever you are reading an article online, if the article starts with a question, the answer is probably no. So you don't even need to, to finish reading the article, just go to the point. Usually the answer is no. And, and if you think about uh, all the articles being written in 2016 about uh, running databases and containers, pretty much all those articles start with questions. Uh, most of the time, the answer why you should not run your database on Kubernetes is because containers were supposed to be stateless. Okay, let's fast forward to 2019 now. And yeah, that's how the articles are today. Like they say, hey, run, run your container, uh, your database on containers in five minutes, uh, running at scale. So yeah, that, that's how things change in just two years. The question is, what have changed then, right? Why in just two years, uh, the opinion, the, all the opinions completely changed? Um, one thing is, yes, we all agree that running databases on uh, bare metal is great, is the best uh, performance you can get, but setting up um, uh, bare metal databases are com is complicated, right? Uh, setting up uh, a database in a Docker is much easier to configure, especially when you have to scale up the database. Um, when you are running in a database in a Docker, usually you can separate also the compute from storage. So you can upgrade the two databases independently, the, the two uh, machines independently. Of course, uh, there is some, some uh, delay between the communication, but nowadays the average uh, uh, delay is one, one millisecond on EBS. So yeah, if you can uh, tolerate uh, one, second, uh, one millisecond uh, latency, okay, that might be fun, that's a good thing for you. Of course, uh, other thing is, it's not just about running the database on, in a container. Um, what we want is a production uh, grade container that you can run and rely on. And that's pretty much what most of the database providers have been working on, like creating, generating really stable uh, Docker images so you can actually run in production. And of course, uh, now we have uh, Kubernetes with uh, stateful sets, which makes easier to, to run those containers. But of course, one of the problems with containers is that it's, you can just generate a single image for every possible configuration, right? So it's infeasible. Uh, and that's why we have content, content resource definition, uh, definitions and content resource definitions in Kubernetes. So you can basically use an a initial image and configure everything you need from the database in a YAML, from, from a YAML file. Uh, but, well, this is still half the story. Databases are stateful applications. The reason why your application is stateless is because you push the state to the database. Um, and yeah, what can we solve to do this then? Uh, because it, whenever I start, if I start to, to, to nodes of Couchbase or MySQL or Postgres, I still have to communicate, uh, co go to those two containers and connect one to another to create a real cluster. And that's where the operator uh, framework kicks, kicks in, in Kubernetes. Uh, for those who are not familiar with it yet, so the operator is pretty much an application um, focused on managing another. Actually, in Kubernetes, you have controllers, 
and controllers can listen to events or changes in, in your, in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And when you pack a bunch of con uh, controllers for a given purpose, we call this an operator. Of course, um, now this is quite stable and quite easy to create an operator for, for Kubernetes. And this is something that we have been working on uh, since, since two years ago. When we started building our operator, we didn't even know if uh, operators will be a thing. And luckily, we were in the right, in the right path. So, okay, but uh, what a database is so, what the database company is so excited about operators? So, the thing is, with an operator, we have some control over the infrastructure, and we also have a lot of knowledge of the database itself. So, we can have, a, we can provide a database as a service like experience in your cluster. So this is uh, a lot of what uh, our vision of what the, the future of the, the database is. So companies will just stop uh, offering database as a service and ship the operator with the database and you can have this uh, deploy your own database as a service uh, solution in your cluster. And of course, when you do this, you don't lose a lot of flexibility that you have to, to give up when you go to a, the best solution because you, you can't finally tune your database according to the hardware or to, according to the main characteristics of your application. And if you are still skeptical about databases running on, on Kubernetes, just remember that ATCD is exactly that, right? It's a, the main core of, of Kubernetes is a distributed database. Okay, but what I'd like to show you today, uh, today is really a full hands-on demo of how it works. Uh, this is something, this is not the future, this is right now. We already have many clients using this in production. So I, I, I would like to start here. I have, um, let's do this here, uh, alias k equals to kubectl, okay. So I have, I already have here um, my operator running. It, the operator is something that you just uh, get the YAML file and install. Oh, sorry. Okay, now, yeah. So I already have the, the operator running here. It's something that can, you just use Helm install. Uh, and it's fully provided by the, the database provider itself. <coughs> and now I want to deploy a cluster, a couch-based cluster. So what I have to do is basically run com control, create, minus F, um, couch-based cluster. And, yep, that's it. Now we can com control, get pods, minus, minus watch. Okay. And then we can wait for uh, the, the, the nodes to, to be created. Let's see what's going on first. So here is my um, YAML file. So this is a CRD. So you, you basically teach uh, Kubernetes that, hey, now you know how to deploy Couchbase, for instance. Um, and now I, I can say, hey, I want to create uh, this uh, schema. We, we call it Couchbase, we call it buckets. I want you to create three nodes uh, running these services here because uh, Couchbase is kind of modular, so you can choose how many services you want to run. So, but basically, I'm saying, hey, I have three. I want three replicas of the data, three nodes, and uh, those are all the configurations that I want, like how many, how much memory, how much CPU. Of course, I can use it. I can use here ephemeral persistent storage, which is the one that we're using here. I can also attach uh, use volume clamps and uh, use remote persistent storage. And of course, as soon as Kubernetes release um, uh, local persistent storage, it's pretty much the same thing, right? So let's come back here. Okay, we already have node run running. So probably if I forward the port here. Yeah. I can access my database from here. So 
So whenever you install Couchbase, this is basically the web console. I can do come here and say administrator, password. Okay, uh, I, I will also deploy an uh, app here just to insert data on my, my application. So let's come here to settings, um, I mean security, and then user, my, my user is called Couchbase Sample, Couchbase Sample, okay, don't do this at home, please. User, now I have a user. Uh, what else you can do? Here I have this Couchbase sample uh, bucket here, which is pretty much like a schema database because this is the, the one that I have defined. I can create a second one here called, let's say, test. And yeah, let's wait for the, the bucket to be created. And disappeared, right? Why this bucket disappeared from here? Because this is my single source of truth. So whenever, if you try to do anything here, it will be reverted by Kubernetes because this is what I have specified. So same thing here. Now let me just deploy my, my, my application. So I ha can um, kube control, create, minus f, um, spring boot app. So this is basically a very simple spring boot app that uh, inserts data on the database. Uh, just for curiosity, uh, this is um, here. So it's a simple Java application. We do support Spring Data. So basically, what, what your application does is we store data as JSON. So we simply directly translate your whole code structure to the, to uh, to JSON. So here you have a user, username, preference, and um, the, the the result of this is just a simple, let's come here to buckets, documents, is just a directly translation of this structure here. So that's basically how we store data. And of course you can still, we have a query language here that you can query, uh, let me say, you can still use like select, distinct, all this kind of stuff. But let's see my applications already, yeah, my applications are already running. So if I come back here, buckets, statistics, Statistics. Okay, yeah, so my application is running here. Okay, this is where everything gets interesting now. What I can do here is, let's clear, uh, cook control, get pods. Okay, I have now here, as I specified, three nodes running of my database. Here you can see three servers, right? Um, what if I come here and say, cook control, delete pod, pod cb example 0002. So I just no, lost a whole node of my database, right? Uh, what I have to recover from this? Nothing. Because, well, we have specified here that um, we want three nodes, right? So Kubernetes will bring this node back. But this is a stateful application and we have to join the node to the cluster, we have to trigger data rebalancing to move some of the, some of the copies of the data of, this to, of the node 000 and 0001 to this new node, right? And this is exactly what the operator does. It understands, okay, now, now that we lost a node and we have a new one, what should I do? Uh, so Kubernetes, probably at this point, if you come here, say Kube control, get pods, we already have, a, CB example 003, which is the, the, the new node that uh, uh, Kubernetes brought back. And yeah, we are already uh, rebalancing data here automatically. So uh, there is a, we, we've removed the node 002, now we have 003, and now we are copying data from those two nodes to the third one. So this is one of the cool things that you can do with operators. So it's very similar to what you would get in a, in a database as a service thing. And again, this is something that we released almost a year ago now. So it's already something that is, is reality. Of course, uh, there are many things that we are working on. So for instance, 
uh, automated pickups and well, so a lot of other stuff, but a lot of the things, basic needs are already there. Same thing, for instance, if I want to, let's say if I want to upgrade my database, right? I can come here and say, uh, well, I want to upgrade to base 6 at 5. No, let's just zoom here. Now I want to Couch base 6 at 5. I can just change the version here, come to my log and say kube control, um, uh, replace, minus F, Couch base cluster, and boom, it will automatically upgrade the database for you. And well, what else can I, can I do here? I'm not upgrading because this will take a while, but uh, we are still rebalancing. And the good thing is, even though it's still rebalancing, I can still change whatever I, 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 I want in the database, and the operator knows what are the steps. It, he knows that, okay, I have to back off a little bit this other uh, uh, request because I have to finish this first, and then after I have finished this process here, I will, I will uh, execute this other request. So let's say I want to upgrade my database then, uh, uh, scale, scale out. I can come here and say, now I want five nodes. I can just come here, kube control, replace, minus F, couch base cluster, uh, and, oops, probably I messed up with something, yeah, zero dot one, and here, five, and replace. Okay, so now, uh, as soon as we finish rebalancing, it will automatically, st uh, automatically scale out our database. Uh, what if my application, let's, here, here, group control, get pods, let's see if we already have any other, any other results, not yet, but we'll have soon. So, what else can I do? So, uh, something that is more couch based uh, folks, uh, we allow you to boost your application according to, to the characteristics of your application. So let's say my application reads much more than write. I can do something like, yeah, uh, let's, I want five nodes running data and 20 nodes running index and query. And I can do this kind of thing, apply again, it knows exactly how to create different nodes um, uh, with different servers without losing the data. And yeah, this is pretty much uh, one of the things we, we are very, uh, we are very, very excited because, well, it's basically the best of both worlds, right? You, you can still, right now in the best solution, you basically can only, most of the time you can only upgrade like reads and writes and without really knowing what's going on. And here, for instance, you can even adjust the hardware according to the service. So for instance, data needs a better disk, uh, index needs more memory, query needs more CPU. So that's a lot of the flexibility you have. Uh, let's see here if we have, or have, okay, get pods. Yeah, not yet. Let's wait for the rebalancing finished. Of course, uh, this will, be ne will, will never be as fast as uh, uh, scaling up and down your uh, stateless application because again, we have to move data and here we are very cautious on how do we rebalance the data because, well, when you lose a node, for instance, your performance is already de degraded, right? If uh, we start copying data to the other node as fast as possible, well, you know, your application will have an even worse performance. So that's one of the things that, that we are very cautious. Uh, in the meantime, I have to sh like to show something else. Uh, of course, one of the discussions we have is what about performance? So uh, we have this thing called Yahoo Cloud Service uh, Benchmarking, which is a standard way of uh, benchmarking databases, so there's different uh, types of workloads and you test all those different types and, and measure the results. And our experience is that, yeah, we, you will have some, some performance uh, decrease when you're running on containers. Of course, that depends of the, uh, of the type of workload you are, uh, run, you are testing. 
So on average, we would say, yes, something, something around uh, 5% performs the grade. So of course, like comparing uh, the workload A, for instance, which is, doesn't show any difference, and workload E, which was the, the, probably the, the worst scenario we, we saw, like a 10% penalty uh, performance. Of course, if you're using uh, um, uh, the best solution, for instance, this is something. This is a price you are already paying, but because pretty much every single the best uh, database out there is running on, on Docker images, and well, in the worst case, what you can do is just add an extra node, and and you still can can have like all the benefits of managing the database itself for you, self-monitoring, easy to scale, and all, all those kind of things. So uh, let me just come back here. Let's see if I come, cool control, get pods. Hopefully, yeah, now we are scaling our database here. Oops, sorry, again. So yeah, now, if you here, if you can run cool control, get pods, now we have to find like, oh yeah, we're on five nodes, right? That was uh, our definition. And here on control on, on the control pane, you already have all the five nodes running and re data rebalancing is already triggered to uh, copy some data to the new nodes. And well, that's it. You, you have log consolidation. You have, uh, you can easily set up automated backups here. Um, you can use uh, pod.scaler on Kubernetes to uh, okay, according to a uh, given r given rules, you can scale up and down your database. So, for instance, oh, after if the database has like 80% of memory for three hours straight, yeah, just spin up a new machine, for instance. So that's uh, one of the things you can do. Like you can even at some point make your database elastic. Of course, it will again never be as elastic as your application because this is a stateful application. But yeah, that's pretty much the, f the future for us. And we believe that pretty much every single uh, database company will have this kind of offer. And again, this is not just us. Pretty much, uh, you can see there are plenty of uh, operators for databases popping up all over the place. Um, I know the Postgres operator is made by the folks from uh, Zalando and they are running also in production like uh, with this operator. And yeah, that's what I had. Thank you very much. <laughs>